hope you're all doing fab. Today I have a highly requested video for you guys and it is how to start your own blog which is always very exciting. Excuse the sweaty face and messy hair, it is really hot outside, um, especially for autumn. I think it's like a heat wave kind of dying over here so <laughs> the sun is also shining directly kind of my way. So just bear with me and I hope you guys will enjoy this video. To me, you have two platforms to kind of choose from, and that's Blogger and WordPress. Now, WordPress, not um, the free WordPress, but I would suggest the self-hosted WordPress. Now, there's quite a difference between these two. I would, for anyone just starting out, starting a blog, I would always suggest Blogger. I was on Blogger for years. It was amazing. I would probably still be on there if it was not for another site I had on WordPress. So I kind of found it easier to have both of them on the same platform. But otherwise, Blogger has loads of perks. Obviously, it's free to sign up. It's very easy to do everything they have, all the templates for you, all of those things. So basically, you just need um, an email, you sign up with them, and everything's done for you. And there are loads of people that will use Blogger, even like big um, Bloggers like Blair Edie from Atlantic Pacific, she still uses a Blogspot blog. Now, if you don't want your name.blogspot.com, you can also buy a domain name and actually integrate that with your blogger. So it's still free, but it looks like a hosted site. And you can totally design Blogger just the way you want. So I think that is a pretty good option to start with. Now, WordPress, you obviously need a lot more skill and... Um, HTML, the whole layout area is different, uh, you'll have to pay to get your site hosted every month with a place like GoDaddy for example, so that might be about $10 a month for that. Obviously you, you need to buy your name, your um, domain name for that and it feels to me like it's a lot more upkeep than Blogger is. But there are a lo like loads of awesome things you can do with WordPress as well. You can um, get these awesome plugins, which I love. You can um, have SEO tools, which is really good for search engine ranking and all of these things. And obviously, you have like total freedom over what you want to do with your site. And I actually bought a template for mine, a plain template, so that was awesome to use that. Anyway, so first off, you need to choose between those two platforms. Now, when you're done choosing your platform and you actually want to sign up or get something going, get a domain name, you have to decide on a name. Now, to me, your name equals your brand, if you're going to think in that direction. I know lots of people just want to start a blog for fun, but blogs can be businesses too, as you have seen with all the big bloggers. And I see nothing wrong in making some extra cash or all your cash with your blog if you can do that, if you're so lucky. So um, next up is your name. Now it's very important not to choose like either a silly name or, um, I can't even think of examples now, something you feel that won't um, stay through time, something that will just be for that year or that month that's in now, don't call yourself Bieber Fever. <laughs> something silly like that. That's obviously not going to work. Um, I made that mistake and I chose Superficial Girls because my blog started out way back in like 2006 I think as a gossip blog and then it grew into something totally different but then I had everything set up as Superficial Girls already so I'm stuck with that name now that everyone knows. So choose it will think a lot before you choose your name. If you've chosen your name Go register on whatever blogger or WordPress, wherever you want your site, and then go and do your social media. Go to Twitter, go to a, get a Facebook page, Pinterest, YouTube, everywhere, and register that same name on all your accounts. Obviously, if you're going to choose something really um, popular, it's going to probably be taken already. So try and think about that. Be really like creative and interesting with your name. And just go register everything because you don't want to be stuck one day and you want to get a Twitter account after you thought, oh no, I'm not going to like Twitter. All of a sudden you like it and your name has been taken by someone else. And people are at replying that random person thinking it's you. So that could be really awkward. So 
Now that you have all of that sorted, you can go on to the layout of your blog. Now, there are loads of places you can get templates, templates for blogger, although blogger has some awesome templates, especially the minimal ones I really enjoy. You can go and buy a template, there's loads of Etsy stores that have beautiful templates these days that come with headers and all sorts of things. You can have one designed for you if you have the money for that, or you can design it yourself, obviously on Photoshop or GIMP. Or on WordPress, if you have a WordPress site like me, I went to WooThemes.com and I got myself the Canvas theme, which is fully customizable. It cost $70, but it was totally, totally worth it. But obviously, if you're on Blogger, you can just start out by designing your own header, um, a few buttons on the sidebar if you want, and all of that stuff, like background color. It's all lots of fun, and there are loads of tutorials out there on how to do all of that. Now when you're done with all your site goodies and it looks fantastic, you kind of need to put content in there because obviously no one wants to read an empty blog because there's nothing to read. <laughs> so then you have to start thinking um, what you want to put in there. Obviously you have thought when you did your name or when you started your blog, you were like, I'm going to be a fashion blog or I'm going to be a beauty blog or a lifestyle blog that covers everything or a food blog. There are so many things to choose from. So now you actually need to start with the content. Now I, now I have superficial goals, which is kind of a lifestyle blog, but more towards the fashion side. I do have food and all sorts of things like that as well, but mostly I have my fashion goodies. Then I have Fab Guide, which is lifestyle. It's totally everything. There's recipes, there's outfits, there's shopping, there's beauty, all sorts of things, decor. And you need to decide what you want in your blog. So it kind of has a theme. Even lifestyle, it still has a theme. People know they can come to your blog for a whole bunch of things. So um, once you know that and you specifically know what you want to write, you can start. And that's such a fun part. Are you going to do long blog posts? I know loads of people write like really long ones and they're really well written. If you're a good writer, if you're not a good writer, maybe do lists of things like 10 things um, you love doing, 10 outfits you love or 10 things to pay together, whatever it might be. There's so many different ways to write blog posts. It doesn't always have to be full of text. But um, text is nice because obviously content is key when you want your blog ranked in search engines. And you can also decide how personal you want to be. Usually I like writing just like a tiny little bit, maybe about my day or something else, something personal sometimes, other times not. Some people decide to be totally anonymous, they don't want anything personal, which is fine as well. Maybe you have like a different view on things and people still find it interesting. So there's always a way to hook your audience. Then obviously photos. If you take your own photos, great, but make sure they are clear and pretty. You can even take photos with your iPhone or whatever type of phone you have as long as they are clear. And, and if you really want to be serious about blogging, I would suggest getting a nice camera because they do take awesome photos. And photos, people love photos, obviously they want to pin photos and share photos and if you have a Facebook page they're going to like the photos or on Instagram. So that's a really good thing to have. And if you use other people's photos, which a lot of people do and which is fine as well, please remember to credit them because there's nothing worse than seeing people's photos and they don't get the credit for it even though they work really really hard to put that out there and I think if you take your own photos you will actually know how hard that is so that's definitely something to remember now that is all I'm going to talk about today and in the next one I'm probably going to go a little bit more in detail with things and with SEO and how to monetize your blog and all kinds of things like that so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will have a post up on social girls with all these points in kind of detail form um, so you can read and remember and I'll have some links to where you can go get things so anyway guys have a lovely day and I'll chat to you all soon